I hope everyone uh, can uh, hear me. My name is Victoria Pescurte. I'm coming from Department of Anesthesia and Intensive Care at uh, Nikolai Testimitsano State University of Medicine and Pharmacy. Uh, by profession, I'm an anesthesiologist, passionate with data science, machine learning, and related fields, and uh, trying to apply the advances in this uh, field to a clinical setting and for continuing the presentation, uh, I will uh, play the pre-recorded video. Meanwhile, I will prepare for eventual question. Uh, the screen and uh, using the latest definition, we can state, uh, making it uh, simple that uh, this is the situation when the body uh, starts losing the fight with the microbe. And some statistics uh, stating that uh, one out of three intensive care patients will present with sepsis. Mortality is quite high and ranges between 15 and 56 percent. And worldwide, sepsis is affecting more than 30 million people with uh, 6 million deaths. Some uh, important uh, medical aspects concerning sepsis. First of all, diagnosis is based on microbe identification and confirming uh, this and uh, tracking the conditions of the patient using uh, a number of clinical tools. Uh, on the screen is SOFA, sequential organ failure assessment score that is using a, a number of parameters listed on the screen. Next, the treatment. Uh, the primary importance here is the source control and antibiotics that should be used timely. Uh, timely means without a delay and the plot illustrates uh, what means a delay uh, in antibiotic administration. Uh, with every hour the mortality will increase and uh, exceeding uh, six to five hours with antibiotic treatment uh, can cause uh, a double increase in mortality. Summarizing, we can say that uh, available tools uh, are uh, good for confirming the diagnosis, but they are far not appropriate for uh, predicting sepsis. And this research is uh, designed to cover this gap. Machine learning is being used for uh, addressing this problem uh, recently, and I will uh, describe one of the state-of-the-art systems uh, described in the literature, uh, the inside uh, system. Uh, and at the bottom of the screen, you have an article with more details about this. I will uh, show only two diagrams. I would like you to pay attention to the diagram on the right with the uh, performance of different systems. Uh, the upper uh, line, upper curve, uh, is for the inside system. The lower one are for the regular tools, including a sofa, and you can see the difference. Uh, one of the uh, outcomes uh, concerning the use of this system uh, will be a 39.5% uh, reduction uh, of in-hospital mortality. Our research uh, uh, uses data coming from uh, a 2019 challenge concerning early sepsis prediction from clinical uh, data uh, that uh, comprises over 40,336 uh, cases uh, coming from two distinct U.S. hospitals, set A and set B, including 40 parameters, vital science, laboratory indices, and others, 1.5 million time windows, and over uh, 10 million data points, and because uh, set A uh, contains less missing value, uh, it was selected for further processing. Tools used for this research can be grouped as uh, on the screen. First of all, uh, our programming language tool in uh, tools including Shiny package for building web applications, H2O platform for machine learning, all from language for some verification and finally python programming uh, language including the h2o wave a recent package for building uh, practical clinical applications uh, 
Back to the data, we can see that there are uh, many parameters present uh, in the uh, data. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of them are missing, but about this a little bit later. Now, I would like to mention that we were uh, experimenting with different sets of parameters and selected as parameters with the highest discriminatory value, sepsis, versus non-sepsis. Uh, the, the set uh, presented on the screen, including heart rate, oxygen saturation, systolic blood pressure, diastolic pressure, respiratory rate and temperature. Uh, and in fact, the six parameters are routinely available in a modern intensive care unit. Uh, data and missing values. Uh, on the screen, you have uh, an example of a, a subset uh, with a lot of missing values and for addressing this problem we elaborated an algorithm for data reconstruction and you can see the result on the left uh, bottom part of the screen how the reconstructed data looks like. Uh, data representation is an, another important step uh, and in this, uh, our case we uh, are using uh, the Kolmogorov uh, algorithmic complexity calculated by the block decomposition method. I will be speaking um, in details about uh, this approach tomorrow during my presentation in one of the uh, signal processing sessions. Uh, now I will focus only on data engineering aspects, uh, original da data to uh, be passed to the algorithmic complexity calculator need to be reshaped uh, in three by three matrices uh, and such a matrix uh, encodes the condition of a certain body system, in this case circulatory system, where rows are for parameters and uh, columns for parameter uh, values in uh, consecutive samples. Uh, these uh, matrices are binarized using uh, as a threshold uh, value the mean value per row and uh, later one uh, we are calculating the algorithmic complexity and also adding to the uh, final vector that is passed to uh, the machine learning algorithm the difference of the respective parameters value between two consecutive hours and at the bottom of the screen you can see how uh, the final set of the data uh, looks like with the first column for uh, the uh, sample labeling zero for non-sepsis and one for sepsis next two columns for uh, the uh, algorithmic complexity and v1 to v12 uh, uh, columns for the difference of the six parameters during three hours uh, next step will uh, consist on uh, splitting the data into the training and test set. For this, we are using three pod and ProBust uh, principles uh, that will let us uh, later one to perform uh, tenfold cross validation during the machine learning phase. And in this way, the final set for machine learning uh, will consist uh, of, of the trading set including uh, 5,157 samples and the test set uh, that comprises 909 samples and uh, this the same set uh, is passed to four uh, machine learning algorithms, namely generalized linear model, gradient boosting machine, distributed random forest, and neural network as multi-layer perceptron. On the screen, you can see the comparative performance of four algorithms by area under the curve, and the lower performance is shown by the linear model, and the higher is one by the gradient boosting machine. And in this table, you can see a more detailed information concerning the uh, performance metrics. And once again, the GBM uh, is the uh, best. And I would like to mention that uh, from the very beginning, we have replicated in our language the inside uh, system, uh, originally built in uh, Python uh, language, and used uh, this uh, replica as a benchmark while uh, uh, researching 
uh, our uh, own system as you can see the performance it is quite uh, similar uh, except recall that is two percent higher in uh, our system and specificity that is two percent lower uh, for our system and now i would like to uh, uh, switch to um, demo application that exemplifies uh, most of the aspects that I uh, have presented so far. And here on the center of the screen, we have an Excel-like uh, uh, table. Just a moment. Uh, where we, uh, the doctor or the nurse can input the parameter value, for instance, heart rate 78, uh, saturation 97, temperature 38, uh, systolic blood pressure 115 millimeters of mercury, diastolic 76, respiratory uh, 24, and uh, collecting uh, three such uh, observations of all, uh, six uh, parameters value, or we uh, are able to ask the system to perform the prognosis. Uh, what else we can do with this application? Uh, here we have a list of preselected cases, and I will be using one of them. We can uh, display the patient data as a table with uh, columns for respective parameter and uh, rows for uh, all the observation we can also visualize this data as plots we can see that our patient is for the seven hours uh, in the intensive care unit and finally we can uh, get the prognosis for the last observation which in uh, this case uh, is uh, uh, high risk sepsis uh, prediction uh, we also can um, look at the dynamics of the sepsis risk during the patient's stay. Uh, for this, uh, we need to uh, perform the uh, respective calculation and finally we can plot it. Uh, we can uh, notice that uh, at the very beginning the risk was uh, low, zero risk, and uh, in one hour from the admission the risk uh, be become uh, high and it also means uh, that uh, we need uh, to start antibiotics and it also means that only in four hours the regular clinical tools will be able to confirm the diagnosis. Okay, uh, in fact, uh, that's all about my presentation. And uh, maybe there are questions concerning the presentation. Any questions? No questions? Thank you, Professor Yapaskurta, for interesting presentation.